dear people welcome to edupedia world 9th grade computer applications video lecture series i am upeka vandibona and today we are going to learn about internet protocol suit First of all, let's try to understand what is Internet Protocol Suit. Internet Protocol Suit is the computer networking model and set of communications protocols used on the Internet and similar computer networks. It is commonly known as TCP IP because its most important protocols, the Transmission Control Protocol, TCP, and the Internet Protocol, IP, were the first networking protocols defined in this standard. Nowadays, it's using protocols more than TCP IP. So that's why it's better to use IP suit rather than the term TCP IP. We'll get to know a few of the other protocols from the IP suit. So now let's see what does the IP suit do. The protocols in the Internet Protocol Suite provides end-to-end -end connectivity specifying how data should be packetized, addressed, transmitted, routed and received at the destination. This functionality is organized into four abstraction layers. Let's look at those layers. Most network protocol suits are viewed as structured in layers. This is a result of the Open Systems Interconnect OSI reference model designed by the International Standards Organization, ISO. The OSI model describes network activities as having a structure of seven layers, each of which has one or more protocols associated with it. The layers represent data transfer operations common to all types of data transfers among cooperating networks. The OSI model describes an idealized network communication protocol family. TCP IP does not correspond to this model directly as it either combines several OSI layers into single layer or does not use certain layers at all. If we take the layers from lowest to the highest, the first layer is link layer. It contains communication methods for data that remains within a single network segment also called as link. So this one handles the transfer of data across the network media. The next layer is internet layer. It connects independent networks. So it manages data addressing and delivery between networks. The third layer is transport layer. It handles host-to-host -host communication and manages the transfer of data and assures that received and transmitted data are identical. So the final layer is application layer. That is the layer we are much interested in under this section. This layer provides process-to-process -process data exchange for applications and consists of standard communication services and applications that everyone can use. So that's about the four layers. We call these four layers as TCP IP protocol stack. So anyone who uses internet should be adhere to this TCP IP protocol stack. It's a worldwide standard, so there should be a one who should maintain them. The TCP IP model and many of its protocols are maintained by the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force. They have the responsibility of maintaining these standards for worldwide. Now it's time to look at the application layer. The application layer includes the protocols used by most applications for providing user services or exchanging application data over the network connections established by the lower level protocols 
but this may include some basic network support services such as many routing protocols and host configuration protocols. So that means the services provided by the application layer work with the transport layer to send and receive data. So now it is the time to look at few of the application layer protocols. The first one is FTP, File Transfer Protocol. It is a standard network protocol used to transfer computer files between a client and a server on a computer network. FTP is built on a client-server model architecture and uses separate control and data connections between the client and the server. FTP users may authenticate themselves with a clear text signing protocol, normally in the form of a username and password, but can connect anonymously if the server is configured to allow it. If it is secure transmission that protects the username and password and encrypts the content, it uses the protocol FTPS. S means the term secure. The next protocol we interested is HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It is an application protocol for distributed collaborative hypermedia information systems. Hypertext is a structured text that uses logical links, that called as hyperlinks, between nodes containing text. HTTP is the protocol to exchange or transfer hypertext the foundation of data communication for the World Wide Web. The secure transmission protocol of HTTP is the HTTPS. The next one, SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. It is an internet standard for electronic mail transmission. For the secured SMTP, we use SMTPS protocol. The final protocol we selected in the application layer is IMAP, Internet Message Access Protocol. It is the Internet Standard Protocol used by email clients to retrieve email messages from a mail server over a TCP IP connection. IMAP was designed with the goal of permitting complete management of an email box by multiple email clients Therefore, clients generally leave messages on the server until the user explicitly deletes them. Virtually, all modern email clients and servers support IMAP. IMAP and the earlier POP3 post office protocol are the two most prevalent standard protocols for email retrieval, with many webmail service providers such as Gmail, Outlook and Yahoo Mail also providing support for either IMAP or POP3. Secured IMAP connections known as IMAP-S. For email handling, we learned two protocols, SMTP and IMAP. So why we need two protocols for email services? Let's look at that question. Email servers and other mail transfer agents use SMTP to send and receive mail messages. User-level client mail applications typically use SMTP only for sending messages to a mail server. For receiving messages, client applications usually use either POP3 or IMAP. That means at the user level, it uses separate protocols for different functions. But in the server level, it uses one protocol to perform the two functions sending and receiving. Apart from the four protocols we listed down here, FTP, HTTP, SMTP, IMAP, there are a lot of protocols working in the application layer. These four are the most frequently used protocols in the application layer. So now let's look at what happened after the application layer. Data coded according to application layer protocols are encapsulated into transport layer protocol units, which in turn use lower layer protocols to effect actual data transfer. 
application layer protocols generally treat the transport layer and lower level protocols as black boxes which provide a stable network connection across which to communicate. The transport layer and lower level layers are unconcerned with the specifics of the application layer protocols. So that's all what we have today about Internet Protocol Suit. Little bit technical, but I hope you understood everything. So today we learned what is Internet Protocol Suit, the TCP IP protocol stack and its four layers, and especially about the application layer. And finally, we learned about four protocols under the application layer, FTP, HTTP, SMTP and IMAP. You need to learn what each protocol is stand for and why we needed each protocol. So here comes the end. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture for basics of modem. It's another theoretical technical session, so prepare and come. This video brought to you by edupediaworld.com. Watch more from our website.